Good morning. And we welcome you to Friends in Christ Lutheran Church in Morris, Illinois, our streaming service. And um, yes, we miss you. And the gospel lesson for today from John 14 does talk about a time of separation. And a fascinating thing to run across that theme during this time where we are separated and worshiping in our homes. We begin, however, with our first hymn, number 875, Father, We Praise Thee. the words of our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But Father, if we, we confess, confess our sins, sins God, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. And we, we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I ask you then as a pastor, is this your confession? If it is, then repeat after me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. And I pray for God's mercy. And I pray for God's mercy. 
Upon this, your confession, I announce the grace of God to all of you. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority and by his command, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, 584, Faith and Truth and Life Bestowing. at this point with our psalm for the day. It is Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or, or take their, their names, names on, on my lips. lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold, hold my, my lot. lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, Indeed I, I have a beautiful inheritance. inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In, In the, the night, night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to shell, or, or let, let your, your holy, holy ones, ones see corruption. corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And At your right hand, hand are pleasures, pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all in authority in our lives, especially our president, vice president, Congress, judiciary, governors, and all public servants, that they may serve God, bringing his appointed blessings to meet our earthly needs, and that they may be guided by heavenly wisdom 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For new mothers, expectant mothers, and all our faithful mothers throughout church and society, that they may have joy in their blessings, strength in their calling, and courage to train their children in all that is right and good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who are dealing with sorrows and struggles, both in life and in the soul, that they may be strengthened by the presence of God and emboldened to live the life of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the ill, for those in distress and fear, and for the many workers in our hospitals and care centers who care for those in need, that as they share in the work of the Lord, they may be blessed, strengthened in body and soul, and kept safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our farmers, our ranchers, and for all involved in the food industry, that we may receive the blessings of God's good earth, and that those who supply our needs may be blessed and protected by God's almighty hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our deliverance from affliction, healing from pestilence, and salvation from wrath and judgment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And we sing. <laughs>
you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will, grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson for today is taken from the book of Acts, chapters 6 and 7. We're using selected verses. It tells the story of Stephen. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. Verse 12. And they seized him and brought him before the council, and they set up false witnesses. Chapter 7, verse 1. And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him, Go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out. Verse 37. Moses, who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers, this is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make for us gods who will go before us. Verse 51. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. 
But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And as they were stoning Stephen, and the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson is taken from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, beginning at verse 2. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in the scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? 
the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We continue with our next hymn, 861, Christ Be My Leader. <laughs> peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text of the sermon is the gospel lesson. And as I read through the first number of verses, yes, I have to revert to a slightly older version of this. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. We begin in verse 2. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. You know, the older version, the King James Version that uses the term mansions, but we all know that that gives a little bit of a false image because the word mansion suggests to us a very large dwelling where you do not have to be close to all kinds of other people. And that is hardly the picture that Jesus is painting. So I remember how good it was on many, many occasions on the holidays to gather at my mother's house. And everybody crowded around and cousins were running around and playing and being very loud. And then trying to fit into one room for dinner. And that's something we miss right now all over the nation right now. We miss the crowding together, the gathering close. 
So think of the Father's house, where every Christian, every Old Testament and New Testament believer is gathered together. Gathered together, every one of your loved ones who believes in Jesus Christ, your grandparents or your great-grandparents, my father, my mother, everyone from Abel back in Genesis on to the end of the world gathered before God to sing his praises for the blessings he has given. I remember in confirmation class, that would be way back when also, the pastor asked, what is the best part of heaven? And then guided us through that it's not the living forever, not the being blessed, not the pleasures of eternal life, not streets paved with gold, not angel choirs. The best part of heaven is to be with God. I remember preaching a uh, sermon on the second best part of heaven. A friend of mine in another location absolutely loved this. So I ended up preaching it at his funeral. The second best part of heaven is all the believers that are there. There in the promise of many dwelling places. And so both are reunions. The reunion with God and the reunion with all believers. Back into the text. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Exactly how did Jesus prepare a place for us? The image comes to us from the ancient Near Eastern home, where the young man would search for a bride and finding a beloved would plan to bring her home, but not so quick. He had to prepare a place. And that wasn't just arranging for a nice room and sorting out things in the house that was building on. That was wood, and hammer, nails. Hammer and nail. Some years ago, trip to Africa, to Botswana. We visited some family compounds. We walk into the family compound and there's a fence around and there's the parents' house. And over here across the yard is one of the son's houses. And another one and another one and maybe there are grandchildren's houses there. And there together in the family compound there were many dwelling places. Jesus went to prepare a place for us, and it involved lumber, hammer, nails. It involved blood, suffering, dying. And our place was prepared is a picture of the cross. And then Jesus says, I will return and bring you to myself. Again, the picture in the ancient Mideast was when everything was prepared, then the bridegroom would go and bring the bride home. And there would be the wonderful celebrations, and you can read about one of them, John chapter 2, the wedding at Cana, that would last for days. And there coming home, there would be that amazing celebration. I've preached this and shared this at 
quite a number of funerals. Because in one sense, this is exactly what Jesus has promised to us. But then, turn it around and ask, ask of the term in my father's house, what is the best part of heaven for God? And that is to have us living forever with him. That's why at the end of the Bible in Revelation 21, there is that celebration and why God talks as he does. How many times in that chapter does God say that the dwelling of God is with man and he will dwell with us and we will be his people and God himself will be our God and he will dwell with us. Right now we are feeling the separation from one another. Feeling the separation is an appropriate term concerning God. Feeling the separation and coming into this world to bring us to himself. Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and the joy set before him is you. The delight of your eternal life. And yes, we talk in these terms, there was a cost. The love of God is measured out as God the Father was willing to give his son. The love of God was measured out as Jesus was willing to be born for us in a stable laid in a manger. The love of God was measured out as Jesus was willing to receive the nails into his own flesh and receive our sins in his own body on the tree so that we could be his. And again, the text goes on and it says that where I am, you may be also. We are connected. We are connected by what Jesus has done. We are connected by being joined to Jesus. He joined himself to us in his birth. So we celebrate Christmas. He joined himself to our sins at his cross. And we come solemnly and we observe Good Friday. And then he joined us to himself in his resurrection. And we rejoice at that, and we say over and over again on during, Christ, during Easter season, we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. But this being connected to Jesus, terribly important in these days. We're given the privilege of prayer. No matter where we are, no matter how alone we are, no matter how separated we are from everybody else, no matter what our situation, he calls and invites us to come to him with our needs in prayer. Talk to him. He hears. He is there for us. We are connected with Jesus in our times of trouble. So Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. There are those promises. Those promises that are very specific for our days of trouble, anxiety, difficulty. There are those promises where Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Where he says, I am with you always. Or, 
I am with you every day to be literal. I am with you every day to the end of the age. Well, we may be in situations where we find little help. We find ourselves in need. There is always this Savior who measured out his love for us by coming into this world, by going to the cross, by dying and rising for us. What then can separate us from the love of God? Continue on this sermon by looking in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. And if you read no other verses in there, read verses 31 to the end of Romans 8. And then read it a second time. Pause, meditate, and pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds to the true faith in Christ Jesus, to life everlasting. Amen. We continue by joining and speaking our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing hymn number 806, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. time we at Friends in Christ are mourning the passing of one of our members, Jeanette, Jeanette Andrea. We ask for prayers for the comfort for, of her family, her husband. Um, second announcement regarding health and healing. Little girl that we have prayed for She's still under one year of age. Harper Adams is going to be going back into having 
another surgery on her heart. She has done well with the last surgery. There have been some complications, and so this next surgery is necessary. Please pray for Harper. A couple of Christians down in southern Illinois who have been afflicted with the coronavirus, um, Abdullah and Sally. And so we keep them in our prayers. Now we turn and go to our Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come to you. You are our comfort in times of distress. You are our companion through all the days of this life and all through eternity. And you invite us to bring every burden, every worry, every prayer before your throne. We ask you, dear Lord, watch over the families of Jeanette and of Margaret. And we ask you to comfort the many, many throughout our land who have lost loved ones, the many who lose loved ones each day through this disease. Speak your word of salvation and forgiveness and hope and eternity to them. And be by their side through all of their sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. We ask for Janice, who is in hospice care, and then also for our loved ones in nursing homes and assisted living centers, Doris, Shirley, Tina, Bruce, and Molly. Lord Jesus, be with and guard and strengthen your people in their time of need. Watch over them in their time of loneliness. Be their constant companion. And again, hold your promises before their eyes. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask you to give your healing mercies and to guide the doctors and nurses, to strengthen all medical workers, but you yourself be by the side of give healing mercies to, strengthen and restore our loved ones. We pray for Harper, Ray, Signe, Rob, Tom, Abdullah, Sally, Luke, George, Mike, Bill, Sharon, Jackie, Augusta, and Olivia. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. For our loved ones with ongoing personal and medical needs, we ask for your constant presence and for you to guide them and walk with them through all of their days of trouble and prayer. Watch over David, Jim, Jeannie, Dina, Reagan, Milk, <coughs> Megan, Christine, John, Paige, Sammy, Matt, and Morgan. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Watch over Joanne and Art, who are homebound, and over so many others of us who must remain in our houses. Be with them, be by their side. Remind each of us of your friendship and companionship, that as our dear Savior, you walk with us every day of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, in hear our prayer. prayer. We ask for our loved ones who are in the armed forces as we pray for Mitchell, Blake, Lisa, Christian, David, Brian, and Drew, that you would guard and keep them each day as they serve their country, that they may walk faithfully with you and serve your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Hear us, Father, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, who has taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is number 739, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter, which means that in 11 days, that will be not this week, but next week, it is Ascension Day. And we've had our Ascension Day services at 7 o'clock in the evening on that Thursday. We look forward to making plans and communicating with you as to what we are doing for Ascension Day. We are also working at beginning our Bible study again, which would be by a Zoom meeting. And uh, you may find information from that coming through a constant contact or on our website. And then from Friends in Christ Lutheran Church here in Morris, this fifth Sunday of Easter, beautiful day in the Lord. We give you peace.